Welcome back to the Ask the Color Expert podcast. Today's special guest has been with us before. Bobby D. Berard is here. She is a salon owner. She has a special situation with her husband, which is amazing. He is a barber. She is a stylist. They share a space um, that has no name, and we're going to talk about that. It's sort of an underground salon, which is very intriguing. And she's also an amazing educator. She has a company called Revolutionary Hair that has both in-person and online education. And she is also a Jack Wynn, uh, what would I call that, educator, ambassador? What do you call that? Uh, educator. I, um, I just this year was so excited because I got uh, I was able to get onto the national team. So I've been working on that for a while. So that's awesome. So we're a educators. national educator for yes. Jack Wynn Pro. I was awesome. so excited. So congratulations for that. Thank you. And thank you for being here today. As I know you got home really late from a fabulous trip to Arizona with Jack Wynn. Yes. Um, I was able to follow your frolicking in the sun on Facebook. So it was great to see everybody together. So thank you. I'm sure you're very tired. Um, let's start with the working with the husband, because I too work with my husband, but in a much different okay. way. Okay. He has been the silent person in my business from the beginning of the salon days to the present of, you know, going through two different locations to now my education company. Oh. And he doesn't get any of the praise or any of the glory and gets all of the headaches He's, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul and balancing checkbooks and meeting with accountants and doing all of the unsexy things of my business. And I think because it's such a different role from the role that I play, we we get along for the most part. 90% of the time, we're not stepping on each other's toes. But if he was a barber and I was a stylist and we were in the same Building, I don't know. And you've been married a long time. So that's pretty damn impressive. I am very impressed by that. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if it's so impressive, but but yeah, we have worked together for 32 years. We've been married 30 years coming up next year. Uh, but we've been working together for 32 years. So it's been a long time. And when we were at our salon in California, our salon, our stations were actually right next to each other. So he would be to my left and I was here. And then the front desk, like we could, I could kind of lean around and see the front desk when we were busy working behind the chair. But he, you know, he did most of like the salon running part. And then he is a barber. He is exclusively men. He was originally a stylist went and got his supplemental license and now for like 10 years he's only done barbering so it's Amazing. it's worked so i want to point out that you shared you know we were getting ready and i said i have to introduce you how, how am i introducing you and i said i know you still do hair what's the name of your salon and you said you know i really consider it more of a suite because it's just my husband and i and he's a barber and i'm a stylist and i said well what's the name and you said it doesn't really have a name and i laughed because I love, I, I want to talk about this because how many times you and I have been in this industry a very long time and how many times has a stylist blamed the location of the salon, the name of the salon, the salon, not marketing for them. It's always an excuse of someone else being the reason for their lack of success. And if you're successful right now in an unnamed salon <laughs> with your husband, and you've been doing that for a really long time. I think you'll agree that you can be successful. I always used to say to people, you can be in the third floor of a walk up with no sign, no marketing, no branding and be busy if you're good at what you do. That's always been my stance on, on that. I will say that. So I will, we have separate doors, my husband and I, and there is a separation between the two of it. And he does call his Johnny D's barbershop. I have my separate and people have asked me, what do you call it? I'm like, it, it just Bobby D. Burrard hair. <laughs> I don't, um, I agree. I think that it's wherever you are, wherever your feet are planted, if the experience that you're providing and the hair that you're doing is worthy of a referral, you will build your clientele. I a hundred percent, I still believe referral is the way to build our clients, no matter how much social media we do, no matter how much like marketing, no matter if you hire somebody to, you know, promote you a publicist or somebody like that. It doesn't matter if the experience doesn't 
get you a referral. If it doesn't get you word of mouth, I just don't think it's going to matter. And to that point, my son was in, and I may have told this story on your last one because this was a couple of years ago. My son was in the back seat of my car when he was a junior in high school and his he and his friends were talking about people trying to sell them stuff on TikTok and that they didn't want to hear people trying to sell them stuff on TikTok. They wanted to have their friends tell them who who they trusted. And I can't remember what they were talking about at the time, but I thought it was interesting to hear teenagers today, you know, our Gen Z that we talk about, that they really want to hear word of mouth too. It isn't really just social media that they're listening to. I'm happy to hear that because I keep seeing people saying, you know, so-and-so on TikTok said to do this. And I'm like, <clears throat> this is a complete and total stranger on an app that you don't know whether that thing that they're talking about really works or if they were hurt in doing it, or, you know, especially with weird diet things. And they're like, oh, the TikTok challenge. And then this challenge and something, there was something going around with like really cheap shampoo. Did you hear that on TikTok? No. Something with really cheap shampoo and something else. And I was like, and, and the person who was talking about it wasn't a hairdresser and, and people believe and follow TikTok influencers more than their actual hairstylist who understands the chemistry and all the things with hair. So it's really, it's really exhausting. I think Bobby, oh, yeah, at, the yeah. point, at the point that you and I are now, yes, I will go on TikTok because someone sends me a link or whatever, but I don't really post on there. I don't really follow anybody on there. I don't really do well on Instagram. I've done a little better on Instagram, but mostly my tribe is on Facebook. And I think it's a generational thing. You know, we were so excited to even have a social platform when we got turned on to Facebook. It's like, we finally just figured out how to use the damn Facebook. We don't want to have to <laughs> figure out how to tweet and do all these it's other true. things. No, I um, love Facebook. I'm I'm more comfortable there, but I do really kind of love TikTok. Elaine, I think that you should check it out. Like, I, I think that there are a lot of pseudo experts on there and a lot of funny stuff. I actually just posted a video this morning of is a year old. <clears throat> One of my daughter's friends did a TikTok hair lightening with, I want to say it was baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. And she made a paste and she put it all over her hair. I have pictures. It looked like- I remember that you did that. <clears throat> yeah. It was like that blue and gold dress. Like, is it- is it blue and gold or white and gold? And it looked just like that. It was terrible. It was really, really bad. But, um, but I do like posting on there and there is something sort of like a free for all that's on TikTok that I kind of, kind of like sometimes. So. Yeah. It, it's just so, so different than how you and I started out and how we had to market our businesses yes. versus now. Um, I, I'm always conflicted because I've seen it both ways. I've seen, you know, just depending on before and afters on Instagram for people getting clients. And then I've seen paid marketing work so much mm -hmm. better. A combination of paid marketing and referrals is like a super, you know, marketing on steroids, uh, super fast way to do it. And I, I tell people when I teach, like I just shared with you, I have an event this weekend and <clears throat> I share with people you're going to pay one way or the other. You're either going to pay with your time or you're going to pay with money. And it just depends on what you have more of and what you hold more dearly. A lot of people won't give up a dollar, but they'll sit for seven months without a client. And I'm like, if you would have invested and paid for that marketing, you would have clients in there paying you back as you're doing them. So it's just, a, it's a mindset. And it's unfortunately how we're raised. It's how our parents go about doing things and, and our money story. Um, so let's talk yeah. about your education. So you have revolutionary okay. hair. Um, you do both in person and online. Um, and as well, I introduced you as the Jack Wynn national educator. So I love that you are able to have both your independence in revolutionary hair, as well as the backing of a big brand and a community. So you have the best of both worlds. Uh, when I started out in educating, I made a decision to be brand free because, not because I don't love any brands, but because I am a little bit of a rebel, as I'm sure you've seen, you follow some of my stuff, yes. and I tell it like it is. And if a, if the manufacturer, you know, what I found in my experience is they're, they're not always good at everything, right? You have this, this company, you love their gel, and you might love this one shampoo, and this one's bleach, but not this one's color. And I was always a cherry picker as a salon owner. 
So it drove my distributor crazy because they could never really reward me in any big way because I had all these little chips of all these different things. So as an educator, it was really tough to get started. I think you'll agree in the education space. I think when people, I was just chatting with someone on Facebook today and she said, I really would like to educate, but I don't know where to start. And I think we've all been conditioned to think that we have to go with a manufacturer to even be seen and even compete in education. And it was important to me to go it alone and figure it all out on my own so that I didn't have to schlep around to salons with a chart and samples and be in my car all day. Like that was not the dream for me. The dream for me was helping other hairstylists in the best way possible, but not regressing to, you know, going around and, and doing PK classes and having all the hair, hairstyles. You know what those faces look like. <laughs> I've like, never seen that face. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're like, if I have to hear about one more ingredient, I don't care about the rose hips and the calendula and all the <laughs> other things. Like just tell me if the damn thing covers gray. So what has been your experience in having that support of a community and a company, but also being independent Bobby? Yeah. So, and I think that's changed a lot over the years, uh, brands and your ability to be with a brand versus be independent as well. I think that was sort of a natural evolution that had to happen. There was a, there was a pushback because, because when I started my first uh, little fun fact, my first, um, audition for a color team was matrix logics on September 11th, 2001 at the LAX Marriott right next to the airport and so we awoke obviously to a terrible day and everybody had been planning and working for this and they closed down the entire city and for you know a mile i think around the airport so we were we were stuck in the in the hotel so that's it that it was it was a very interesting day and that will always be like the day i became an educator because everybody decided we're going to go ahead and go forward with the education auditions because there's nothing else we can do we are stuck here and we wow. are stuck here for an indetermined um, indeterminate amount of time so we i we went ahead and did it but at that point when you auditioned even if you were a local educator and that's what i was auditioning for i was two years out of school you had to be 24 months before you could audition so i waited and exactly like 24.2 months i was <laughs> auditioning and they you couldn't do anything. You couldn't talk about another product. You couldn't have other products on your shelves. You couldn't do anything. Fast forward, you know, what is this, 23 years? I don't think that's possible because everybody's out there. We're on social media. We're using lots of things. Everybody, there's brand ambassadorships and, um, you know, different ways that you can represent brands without having to align completely with them. So even people that I know that still are working with brands that have been working with them for 20 years, they are now able to do some things themselves. I think Jack was a pioneer in that. Uh, that was when we started nine years ago is when I started using the color. And he told me at the time, educate in any way that you want, do whatever you want to do. We will support you a hundred percent. Now my kids were little, they were in elementary school. Now they are, you know, flying the coop. And I feel really blessed now that I'm able to kind of get back into education and to know that I have the support of Jack and the Jacqueline community with what I'm doing independently, but then also that I'm able to go and do classes and support the brand. It's kind of a really nice symbiotic relationship. So that's okay. awesome. And and Matrix back in the day, I can see why you were drawn to them. I went to one of the first Matrix shows when Arnie was still alive and yes. the energy in that room, it was in Ohio. It was Cleveland, Ohio. Um, oh my gosh. Who's the Psy Cosmetologist? I'm going blank on his name. Oh, um, uh, oh my gosh. What is it? I, I can see his face. I, he just don't did, shit uh, all over yourself. He used to always say, don't, don't shit all over yourself. Things should yourself. be a certain way, but um, doctor, doctor, yeah. Dr. Lou Lassant. Dr. Lou Lassant. Yes. Yeah. He was there. Um, Gino was there. Of course, Arnie was there. And, you know, I just remember everybody was swinging these white napkins that said matrix matrix in there and the, and the do you remember the Altieri brothers that were like dancing and cutting yes. hair at the same time such so good times it was yes. i mean hair shows were so different then 
And you just felt this like, oh, I have the chills just talking about it. When you walked in, you were so proud to be in the industry and so excited to be around all these people that were so seemed so much further ahead than you. Like you're saying, you were two years into the industry. First of all, kudos to you two years in to go to become an educator. I didn't even know what the hell the color wheel was two years in. I was like guessing, <laughs> stressing, and sweating every day trying to figure out color, let alone teach it. Well, okay. Um, so it, I was, I had been a salon coordinator for many years. I was two years behind the chair cutting. So licensed two years. But still... Yeah, because I started in 92 was when I started as a salon coordinator. And that's what made me fall in love with the profession. And that's why I went to hair school. That's I love that story because having a salon coordinator work out in the salon. I've owned my salon 33 years. And that's always the biggest turnover is that coordinator position because unfortunately, the the um percentage of profit has just gotten worse and worse and worse in the salons the product right. price is through the roof so the amount that you can allocate to support is not what you would like it to be and it is the most important position in the in the whole entire business they're the air traffic controller making sure client comes in she's greeted she has a drink she has a robe she gets to the right person and you know what it, i'm not surprised that you wanted to move into a different role because you kind of get capped out at how much you can make in that role, even though you love being in the salon and you love the energy of it, being a provider behind the chair, most times you're going to earn a lot more than the right. coordinator, um, yeah. unless they're in a partnership with the business and there's other ways of doing it. Um, so as an educator, for me, my biggest frustration is I call them the ask holes. It's, <laughs> You know, what What would you do for, for my client? She has this, 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 and this. And of course, they don't share a picture and they describe them and you're like trying to picture what they look like. And I will answer, oh, absolutely. I've had this situation before. Step one, this. Step two, this. Step three, this. And then the next day, they put a picture up and I'm like, if, if she listened to what I said and that's what she did, I need to hang up my educator hat and quit tomorrow because that was really bad. So I, I say in the nicest way possible, oh, so was your client happy with that result? Well, no, it didn't really turn out the way that we wanted it to. And, you know, what do you think? What do you think I could have done differently? I said, well, t walk me through what you did. Totally not a single thing that I suggested. So I was like, well, what happened? You know, you asked me what to do. And I told you step one, step two, step three. Yeah, but I thought that it would be better to do. And they did whatever they would normally do before they asked. So I don't call them an ask call to their face, but I'm like, that's being an ask call. You ask someone their advice because you're unsure, but then you don't take the advice and you do what you're going to do anyway. And then you just keep staying in the same state of not knowing and not really understanding, even when it goes wrong, even when it goes wrong, not saying like, okay, so you said step one, this, I was thinking this, explain to me why it was like, ask more why questions versus just not doing it at all. So what would you say is your biggest frustration as an educator? Gosh, I think, well, I, for sure that kind of thing, like if if somebody is, now I think it's different if you're mentoring in person or if you're mentoring in like online uh, and people that I just know online when they do that and you don't really, I think my biggest frustration there is that there's such a communication barrier of the, the electronic medium that, you're not really able to get the full point across and they are not able to kind of get to you everything. Sometimes I will be honest. Sometimes I read a post online and they will be saying what the situation is. And I will read it three times and think, I know that I have a brain. I know <laughs> that I'm not stupid. I have no idea what in the actual heck you're saying like you're saying to me and so i think that digital media is really really difficult i think that um i think it's hard to know what people are asking and then when they get the advice digitally through you know one of us that are educating online sometimes it's difficult for them to understand what it is we actually said so that's that is a big frustration the other thing is i think that there is a huge lack of in-person mentorship today. We talked a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge frustration for me is that in-person mentorship uh, not happening. 
So I, I've been really excited. I I just did a couple of in-person classes over the next couple of weeks. I have about three or four more in-person classes and I went old school <clears throat> and I've started following up with people the same way and calling them on the phone. I love that. And talking to them about what what they did, like it, have they tried anything from the class? Was anything successful? Was anything not successful? Can I help in any way? And following up in that old school way, because I feel like that connection that I want to mentor in that way, I don't want to just be a name on a screen all the time. And I know that you, I love what you talk about all the time when you talk about what you have a, you have actually an ad out right now about the fishing Mm -hmm. that comes up. And I think it's so important that, that people understand that they have to learn how to do it. And it's really hard to learn how to do it without a longstanding relationship. There is never going to be one particular post where you learn how to do something. It has to be like bits and pieces layered on top of each other. Information has to build on itself and you can't do that in one post, in one comment. It's too hard. I love that. And I love that you're following up with people. We we have an email follow-up with, we have a trigger when someone hasn't opened their library in X amount of time, because I know what mm. happens. You buy it and you forget. You like right. goes on and forget you have it. So we're like, you know, hey, want to make sure that your um, library isn't collecting cyber dust, you know, make sure that you're going in. And it's so cute because they all, not all, but a lot of them will answer back and say, oh, we had to take my dog to the vet. And my daughter, like, it's like the dog ate my homework stuff, but at least they know that I care and they know that I'm following up. And I also offer something called a hot seat because to your point, sometimes I want to answer so quickly because sometimes they'll be like, I have a client in my chair and here's the situation, like somebody help. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll be going out to dinner and I'll be texting a member and telling them, mm -hmm. you know, what to do. And I won't say plus equal parts of whatever developer. Like I, there's a lot of assuming going on on my side and they'll be like, okay, so no developer. I'm like, oh gosh, they're so literal with the instructions because mm -hmm. there's a lack of understanding the fundamental basics of knowing that this plus this has to be together to make this work. And it's like, sometimes for, for you and I, it's like, meeting people where they are without knowing where they are. Sometimes when I teach on stage, like I'll be at premiere this June and I'll get so on fun. stage and I'll make a lot of assumptions because I look out into the audience and most people look like me and maybe 10 years younger. There's not a whole lot of 20 somethings there. So I assume that a lot is already knowledge because they've been in the industry so long. And then a hand will go up and a question. And I'm like, shame on me for assuming again. You know, there, you just can't assume you have to really dial it back and to use your words, old school and just not assume anything and just kind of put it out there and say, I may be repeating things that you, of course, know and have known for a long time, but I can't assume that everyone in this room understands that. So I just want to make sure that I explain everything so that everybody's clear on it. And at the hair shows, as you know, they give you an hour. Like I can't change somebody's world in an hour. I can inspire someone to want more and to want to lean into, you know, maybe the way that I teach, but that's the other frustration. There's never enough time to really spend with someone to make a huge impact. I, a lot of the pushback that I got when I first do, started doing virtual education was I don't have the money. I don't have the money. It's too expensive. And at the time, my course was $497 for an entire year. And I'm like, I'm sorry, that's not expensive at all, especially right, no. when I gave my time and my, my, right. Mentoring. and so then I talked to, you know, Vivian McKinder and Beth Minardi and the Wilsons and all these people in the industry. And I said, you know, that, that makes me sad that people are missing out on education because they don't have the resources. And it's kind of like, like that's 22. They don't have the education because they don't have the money. They don't have the money because they don't have the education and they don't know what they're doing. So I said, let's all get together and do a free mentorship. And we did. And we offered it free. Over 300 people signed up free. We had two live events. The first one, I think we had 42 people show up. And the second one, we probably had 28 out of the 300 and some people that signed up. So I said, I call bullshit. It's not that you don't have the money. It's that you don't care. You're not showing up for yourself. I don't, it doesn't, 
make my life any different if you show up for me. I already know how to color hair. You're doing yourself a disservice not showing up for something this amazing that's free. And and what we talked about earlier, Bobby, with social media, that's the problem. They're like, oh, I'm just going to go on TikTok and watch 14 videos to find right. out what you would tell me in one and get it for free. But they're not seeing the whole story. I think, I, yeah, I think you just hit the nail on the head. And we talked a lot about this at the retreat this weekend is showing up for yourself is we don't, we don't show up for ourselves or just as a profession, a lot of times we're giving and giving and giving, but then we don't show up for ourselves. And if you talk, I think, and you can correct me if you think I'm wrong. If you talk to anybody that has had any kind of success in this, in this industry across the board, you're going to find that they have invested tens of thousands of dollars in advanced education. And I know, I mean, I just did over the weekend and I will continue to do so. I love, I was mentioning to you when we were talking, getting prepped for this, that when I'm needing to feel inspired, you're one of the people that I go to. So if I'm working out or whatever, I will pop one of your coffee chats or one of your something on there that that's what I do in my spare time. Because even if I've heard what you have to say 15 million times, the more times I hear it, the faster it's going to come from the back of my brain. And there is nothing worse than being halfway through a hair color and realizing you should have done it another way. And it happens to all of us. It happens to me today. So if I would have heard that one thing one more time, maybe it would have come up faster and that hair would have been that much better. So we have to show up for ourselves. We have to invest the time. We have to invest the money and we have to invest the mental attention because even if you show up, you have to actually show up. And I think that's a hard thing that just because you're physically present doesn't mean you're emotionally, mentally present and that you're actually absorbing the information. Absolutely. Sort of like I went to an event in uh, Austin, Texas recently, a couple of weeks ago. And as an, as an educator that's no longer in the salon, it's important to me to stay current, to mm -hmm. keep my finger on the pulse, to know what's going on. I don't want to get stale. I don't want to get you know, complacent. So I forced myself to travel to Austin to go to this class. And I was the only unlashed and unextensioned and unblonde down to the bra strap person in the entire room. Everybody was very young and very beautiful. And <laughs> at first my friend and I were like, oh God, we feel like we're the geriatric crew over here, you know, and nobody, <laughs> nobody made us feel that way. We were just like, oh, we're really, young. we're really with a lot of young people. And during a break, we leaned in and started talking to these really cute girls in front of us. And what we noticed, Carolyn and I were together, we, we looked around and we said, nobody's talking to each other. Like, I love going to hair, hair shows and meeting other people and hearing their mm -hmm. story. And what's the name of your salon? And where are you? And what do you do about this? And what do you do? And what products do you use for that? And it's that sometimes more of the educational opportunity, the actual educational opportunity. So we leaned up and we're talking to them and they said, you know, we just feel like the state of the industry right now is there's so much competition to be so fabulous on social and that you always feel like you're being compared. You always feel like you're behind. They had small children and they're like, we have babies and we always feel like when we're home with our babies, we should be doing something for our Salon business, and we're at the salon, we feel guilty we're not with our babies. And I said, let me tell you, as somebody who has very few regrets, one of them being putting, always putting my clients and my salon before my family, always. I started my salon when I was 22. So if I had an important day in the salon and one of my kids was, you know, getting awarded at a banquet for soccer or something, I didn't go to this. My husband went, like we made sure that one of us went, but I missed a lot. And I said to these girls, you know, you might look at us and think like, oh, these girls, are, these ladies are so much older than us. Like, what do they know? I said, we've been through it all. And trust me, you don't get that time back with your children. Don't worry about social media. Don't worry about what you see. Because I don't know about you, Bobby, but recently there's been a lot of things coming out from the Insta Fabulous, what their real life is like. They're, they're coming out and they're being really open about it. And it's not pretty. It's not pretty. And what they have given up to be in front front facing person. And you can imagine what Taylor Swift and the card, like what their life yeah. is really, really like. You can have that. I don't want that. For me, getting a note from a student saying I was ready to give up on hair. 
I joined your membership and now I'm passionate again and I'm successful and I'm making more money. Like that to me is success, not how many followers that I have on Instagram. And, and it could just be an age thing, but how do you feel about that? No, I think, I think we just went full circle back to the beginning of this, you know, talk because I don't have a, a sign out in front of my salon. I don't. And it is about word of mouth and it is about the experience. So it, it doesn't matter how well you show up on social. It matters how well you show up behind the chair and in your real life. And so I think, I think there is a lot of competition. I don't know if you saw, um, I've been asking some questions on my Facebook page and one of them was about burnout in the industry. And you had said, I think there's a lot of disconnection. And I think that's true. We're disconnected from each other. We don't work in community the same way that we used to. And we, we think that online is community, but community knows the behind the scenes community knows what's really happening. And we don't know what's really happening when we're just looking at what's online. And so I, I think comparison is a thief of joy. I think that's a, a saying that we should all remember a lot, especially when, when those comparisons start to creep up because it happens to all of us, no matter how old we are, because I'm older than I'm going to admit, but I, but it happens <laughs> and you compare yourself and it, it is the thief of joy that we have to just be where our feet are planted and make that experience, whatever it is, the best it can be. So if I'm with my children and if I'm doing something um, with them, I want to be there. And now my kids faster than I could have even imagined are gone. They're doing living their own lives. My son's about to turn 18. My daughter is off at college. They, it, they don't need me the same way. And I'm thrilled to be able to devote more time and energy into education and my hair profession, but it happened really fast. Um, I can't even remember 10 years ago when I was thinking, you know, that's, we moved about nine years ago, eight and a half years ago to Texas so that we could spend more time with family. I stepped away from traveling and educating back in like 20, 13, 14, the last 10 years have happened so fast. And it's funny because now that I'm doing it again, a lot of the same people, I'm like running into the same people and reconnecting with some of the same people. And it's like, I've only been gone an instant. So to all of those people who are young and have those young families, I will tell you, we will all be here when you get done. Mm -hmm. We would, everybody's going to be here. The, the profession's still going to be here. And so do what you have to do behind your chair, do what you have to do with your kids and, and everything else will be there when you have a little bit more time to do it. Don't compare. That was so beautifully said and so true. You, you think you're going to be irrelevant. You're not going to be, you know, nobody's going to remember who you are. You're going to get lost in the shuffle and you're not going to, you know, show up the same way after. And it's so not true. It's, oh, if I could turn back time right. and go back. You know, I didn't give up doing Saturdays until my kids didn't want to be with me on Saturday. They were going on dates with boyfriends and, you know, doing things with their friends and didn't need me around. I was like, well, that stinks because now here I am sitting here on a Saturday with nothing to do. So that, that really is my only regret in life is not making them a priority, getting home too late during the week. I always got home really, really crazy late at night and they were already in bed and then scrambling. They learned a lot from that. Then, Yeah. I must they lot. learned a lot from watching you do that, right? Well, it's interesting because I did say that to them. I'm like, looking back, you know, how do you feel about that? And they both say that they learned about entrepreneurship and about working hard and all they, they did get a lot on the opposite of it is like being a strong, independent woman. Mm -hmm. But of course, they really wanted their mom too. So they're not but, too well, smart. <laughs> I will tell you one of the best things that happened to me over the weekend had nothing to do with hair. We were sitting in the pool and I had posted something. I had posted a TikTok of, oh, I posted a TikTok from the pool. And I just did like a video from the pool talking about how cool it was. And my daughter from, you know, 2000 miles away, she's at a golf tournament, um, posted, mom, I'm so proud of you. Aww. And I literally, I just started to cry. And then like two comments later was her friend who's in a completely different state at college who said, you're my favorite influencer. I love you, mom. And I was just like, oh. that is the best thing that happened to me. That's awesome. They mm -hmm. get it. They definitely they get do. It. And they get a kick out of us trying to do virtual things. They do. <laughs> so <laughs> so on that funny. note, tell people listening how they can find you and your virtual or and or online revolutionary hair. How can they reach you? 
I am at Revolutionary Hair on TikTok, at RevolutionaryHair.academy on Instagram, and at Revolutionary Hair on Facebook. You can find me on any of those places at Threads also because um, I'm there by default on Instagram. So you can find me there. I do have a link tree on there, so you can go to that. It has all of the links to any in-person education that I have coming up, any virtual education that I have, and all of the good stuff. So. Awesome. Get well, thank you for your time. This has been a pleasure having a little revisit. I just really appreciate it. Thank you for asking me. I was so excited. I was like, I was there, there this weekend in the pool and I'm like, I get to go talk to Elaine Travis. So That's awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your time. It's always a pleasure to see you. And thank you everyone for listening. We yes, will thank see you. you on the next one.